This lesson is going to be about making a fetch request. We're going to fetch request to several different files. We've got a file called text one text. We make the request, it returns back the contents of the file. We've got a second file, text two text, outputs the contents of the text. And then we also have a JSON file. So it's going to be making a request to this JSON file and it outputs it as text. So we've got a second button where we've got the request JSON. We're returning back the response data as JSON data. And the difference is that when you do that, it's automatically going to parse it into a JavaScript object and make it usable. So we can select and make use of the data that's contained within the JSON file. This is all coming up in this lesson. Let's start with an HTML document where we've got an input, a button, and a div connected to a JS file. And within the JS file, we've selected the input, the button, and the div into JavaScript variables. I've also created several files, one called text1 and one called text2. So this is going to be the default file that we're going to put within the my input. Within the right-hand side, we've got the output from the HTML file, and I've also got the dev tools opened at the bottom so that we can see the results of the code. So let's select and add a value for the my input. So this is going to be a value that we're going to be setting with JavaScript, and I'm going to be setting it to text1. So that's going to populate the input field. And then we want to add to the button a way to make a request. So let's add an event listener. And the event that we're listening for is going to be a click event and set an anonymous function directly within the click event. You can also take this out to a function whenever the button is clicked. Uh, this is where we're going to make our fetch request. And the actual URL for the fetch request is going to be contained within the my input value. So that's coming from the input field. And that will give us an option to select several different files. And then with the fetch, and the fetch request to do a get request only just requires the one parameter, and that's the URL. And it chains together different promises that once they get completed, it will move to the next item within the chain. So we're taking the response and returning it back as text. There's also an option to return it back as JSON. So if the file that you are connecting to is a JSON file, and I'll be showing you that later on as well. So once we've made the connection, we've got the response object back as text. We're gonna assign a new value to it called data. And within this data value, we're gonna just output that into the console. So the process will be that whenever the user triggers the button click, we're going to get the input value that's sitting within the input. And then that's going to be the web URL that we're going to make a connection to and retrieve back the text content of that. And right now we're taking that response back as a value and outputting into the console. So now we've got a value of hello world one. Let's also create a function. And this uh, function can be outputting a value. And this function will simply output a value within the results text content. So set the text content to equal whatever we have for value. So now whenever we make the request, instead of sending it into the console, we'll output it into the function called outputter. So there's our result. I also have a second file with just my name, and that's text2. So if we were to update the URL that we're requesting to come back as text2. Let's go ahead and we're going to add another button. And this one is going to be used for requesting the JSON. And you can also hard code the files, so you don't have to have the input. You can hard code those. So this was just for demonstration purposes. So we want to make a request of a JSON file. So I've sa saved this as JSON one JSON. So that's going to be the file that we're requesting. And then we need to structure this within a JSON object format. So let's uh, wrap it with uh, curly brackets so that it is a JSON structure. And then this value itself, and you need to use the double quotes for the actual JSON. And this will be a property called name 
with the value of Lawrence Svakis. So when that second button gets clicked, we want to make a request and return back the JSON data. And the reason that I'm doing it separately is because the text response is going to be different from the JSON data response as we're setting it. So we can copy quite a bit of what we have there, but we're actually getting a set input value. And that input value is going to be using the file JSON1, which is a JSON file. And for now, we'll output it into the console log once we get the data being sent through. So we do the request of the JSON. So now when we request the JSON, we're getting it retrieved back, but we don't still have access to the object data. So we can't say data name. That's not going to come back. It's going to come back as undefined. And the reason is that we're retrieving it back as text. So let's update this to retrieve it as JSON. And now we're able to treat it as an object where we've got the Lawrence Svekis that's coming back from the name object once we make the request to the file. There's also a way to catch errors. So right now we only have the two files, the text one and the text two. So what happens if someone makes a text three and then sends the request, we see that we get this type of error and that's being output. So we want to actually be able to catch the error and we can do that within the response where we can set an error catch when the response handler, and I'm just adding the brackets so that we can return the response text, but we can also have some logic in there as well. So we want to check to see if the response is okay. And if it is, then we return the response text. And then this obviously will work as well for the JSON. And if it's not, we're going to throw an error. So we set the throw and set a new error. And in this case, the error will just output the not found. And then we can add in within the chaining a catch that if uh, there is an error thrown, then for now what we'll do is we'll output the error information into the console. And actually this should be our S. So let's try it and that's still working. Let's try text number two, that's still working. Text number three, and this is where we get the error not found that's being thrown. And then we also throw an error within the console. So we can manage the error and output into the results from the outputter whatever value we have for the error. So this way the user also can see the error outside of the console. So when we make a request we, say, we see that it's an error not found that's being output into the visible area of the page. There's also with the request, so if you do request a JSON file as text, it will just return it back as text. So it's actually not going to be a usable JSON file that it's still not a J J JavaScript object. It's just going to be a text response from the JSON. So go ahead and try it out to get more familiar with what you can do with Fetch.